launches their new Pixel devices that didn't surprise anybody. Also what's not a surprise is the Ryzen 9000 doesn't appear to be selling well and AMD won't stop giving us more AIM4 chips. Let's get in the hot news everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. And for everybody who keeps commenting and I'm on the toilet, I am not. This is a closet. Get your places of house operations correct. And that's what Google's trying to do with their latest phone launch, as well as a few other accessories. The Pixel 9 series of devices got announced at the Made by Google event that took place yesterday. One of the big things that came out about this is the various different phones, the 9, the 9 Pro, the 9 Pro XL, as well as the 9 Pro Fold. In addition to the Pixel Watch 3 and the Pixel Buds Pro 2, I think that naming is correct. But one of the things that I discovered in in all of the at least first impressions videos that I saw of the Pixel 9 is it feels like the hardware quality of these phones is significantly higher than previous generations. It still has the camera bar looking apparatus. It's not quite as wrap around as it was on previous generations, but still a distinct styling as well as the Pixel 9 Pro Fold getting some significant upgrades over the original Pixel Fold. Things like screen brightness is better. It's an eight inch screen on the inside. It's more robust. They didn't increase the price, but they did increase the size of the Pixel Watch 3. And the Pixel Buds Pro 2 have tensor processors inside so that they can be a Google AI assistant for you. But showing off this quick little chart from MKBHD, the phones themselves all seem to share the same processor of the Tensor G4. There appears to be some rumors out there that Apple's going to get to a more homogenous processor setup on their upcoming iPhone lineups, but they also have similar RAM amounts, a little less on the lower end phones. The 9 only has 12 gigabytes, whereas the Pro and the Pro XL both have 16, and then they're roughly the same, especially the Pro versus the Pro XL. It's just larger. But one of the things that is kind of different this time around is the fact that Android 15 will not be launching with the Pixel line of devices. Pixel 9 is coming out, but you cannot get the latest Android operating system. This is not typical for Pixel launches. They usually have the latest and greatest whenever the devices themselves launch, but because the Pixel 9 series is supposed to come out early September, Android 15 is not looking like it's going to be ready until October. Google's delaying it at least by a little bit. It's slightly atypical, but likely you could just blame it on AI. They got a they gotta let the AI cook. AI is cooking and your PC is gonna cook. With the latest PC benchmark game that's out there, Black Myth Wukong, which is supposed to make its debut next week, has announced that they have a benchmark that is free and available for you to download via Steam. You can pick it up to see whether or not your PC can actually run this game. I've been seeing reports. I think Daniel Owen did a Black Myth Wukong benchmark video that you can go check out, kind of highlighting this. It's a game that NVIDIA has been giving away with a lot of the RTX 40 series that you can pick up, whether that's a 4070 or higher, as well as some of the laptops. It's a game I'm excited for. I'm hearing it's like a mix of Sekiro with God of War, and that gets me very excited. Those are those are games that I think I might enjoy playing. I'm looking forward to this, but now it's also available in case you want to test your PC out for free. The only negative that I've seen of the PC benchmark is that it does have Denuvo DRM in case that bothers you and you don't want to have that installed. It's something to be aware of. And Reese is going to make you aware of, of some of the PC deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and I have some deals for you today, starting off with this Basius 65 watt, 20,000 milliamp hour power bank for only $41.02, making it $38.97 old. But then next up, we have the Intel Core i7-12700K desktop processor for only $199.99, with the included promo code taking an extra $60 off the price. And then lastly, we have this gorgeous Alienware 27 inch 1440p 360 hertz OLED gaming monitor going for a very nice price of $690.46, making it $209.53 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like we're going to need a deal on the Ryzen 9000 series chips sooner rather than later because reports are coming out from retailers over in Germany of Mind Factory as well as just kind of looking at Amazon's selling lists. The Ryzen 9000 not very hot in terms of sales. It looks like their sales numbers are significantly lower as well as their page views being lower than previous launches from the Ryzen 7000, even before the X3D variants. This is not 
really a surprise based on how well they reviewed. A lot of people did not sing their praises. And now as I'm saying all of this, I'm realizing that we are probably competing with the embargo drop of the 9900 and 9950X. Uh, CPUs that are supposed to be going on retail sale tomorrow. So it makes sense that their embargoes would be dropping as this video is releasing. I didn't get any samples. What do you want from me? I can't have benchmarks. I can't give you the reviews. We're working on that. One of the big things that came out was uh, we got a review sample of an Asus ZenBook S16 with the new AI9365 CPU. We did a benchmark of the 880M GPU. You check it out right up there. We're starting to move forward in that vein here on UFD Tech. I'm getting excited for this next stage that's been happening while I'm on vacation. We've got new people on the team that are helping us take everything to the next level. I'm very excited for that, but not a lot of people excited for Ryzen 9000. We'll see if that changes with the Ryzen 9 variants, but the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5, people are just apparently either gonna buy 7000 or they're holding out for the 9000 X3D. But in case you've been holding out on AM4, you're on a B450, B550 motherboard, there's another CPU coming your way, according to EEC filings the 5500X3D appears to be making its way downtown walking fast and it's not going to be like its previous worst version of the Ryzen 5 5500 which was based on a previous architecture versus the 5600. The 5600 was on Vermeer whereas the 5500 was on Cezanne whereas it looks like the 5500X3D likely will be just a cut down version of the 5600X3D which in case you're not familiar was a Micro Center exclusive. You can check our review out of it uh, right up there. But hopefully this has a larger release, not something that's exclusive to a physical retailer that is very difficult for a lot of people to get to, but rather is more abundant and you can buy it. And it's a Ryzen 5 X3D chip that a lot of people can pick up, hopefully for like that 199 price point, that would be, I'm not promising anything, I don't have any behind the scenes details on that, but AM4, if you bought a B450 motherboard, you've been blessed. You've, you've had such a good time. Like this is, this is way better than any other motherboard generation that I've seen since I've started being involved in tech. And AMD just, they just keep giving and it's, it's beautiful to see, and it's also kind of funny that it's happening at the same time that their newest stuff is kind of uh, underwhelming a lot of people. So yay AMD, boo AMD, kind of both here is, uh, is the culmination of this part of hot news, which let's talk about what you said on yesterday's episode of hot news. Over on Floatplane, we got Kryptonite saying, no need to comment on this. I'm gonna do it anyways. You can't stop me saying, currently I have to deal with internal customers and being the punching bag for their complaints, but I don't envy you with having to read through the comments on your videos. Just know that the majority you love your content and look forward to it as part of their balanced breakfast. I certainly do, and you wouldn't be at 1 million subscribers if people didn't enjoy the content. Keep it up. I appreciate the kind words, but I also am reading this publicly, uh, even though you said don't, no need to comment, because this is a choice. Like, I want to highlight that. Like, when I respond to things in comment response, like, I don't have to number one do comment response we didn't do that for the longest time on hot news uh, for the first five years that this show existed so it's not it's not something that's mandated additionally like i don't have to read the comments i could i could get by making content without actually engaging with what you guys are saying but i think it's something that i want to do number one i want to see how what i'm saying is being received and not because you know there's probably some part of it that is me desiring to get some sort of approval from the masses, but mostly it's just to see, did I effectively communicate my points and are we disagreeing on things that we're actually disagreeing on or are we making different assumptions? It's, it's all a balanced part of me trying to um, become more well-rounded in understanding of the various perspectives that are out there and so when i choose to pick out a comment in comment response that i disagree with it's usually in the vein of like let's have a conversation about it i think we're approaching this from multiple different ways and then also with the stuff like oh uh, people are calling me an intel shill and an amd shill i know the truth i know what's happening behind the scenes i know who i'm being paid by and what my incentives are and I, I know that they don't align with what people say publicly. And I'm just, I'm kind of having fun with it. That's, that's the idea. I know I'm not an Intel shill. I know I'm not an AMD shill. I think 
Uh, maybe sometimes I can come across as too harsh in one regard or the other. And then that's what comment response is here for, to tell me that I've gone too far and then we can pull back on that, which like I'm not above criticism more than anybody else. Like that's, that's why I value this. I want to make it something where we are having uh, an active conversation together as a team, uh, you and me against the world. And then over on YouTube, we got Jake Carmen saying, I'm waiting for someone to actually do a review of the HX base Zephyrus G16. So uh, just kind of communicating about the review side of things. Again, just talking about that a little bit more. Ours did arrive at the office yesterday. We will have a review coming out on that. It's happening after a few uh, other videos that we have in the hopper right now. So it likely will be like a next weekend release. Hopefully it just came in yesterday, so I can't fully commit, especially with me not being at the studio to really help out with things, but UFD tech, whatever revision we're on, um, more actual, uh, helpful educational review videos incoming and not just hot news. And we got Toja saying, yeah, toilet seat reporting should become a trend to which I responded. What kind of bathroom do you people have that this, reflects your crapper like I don't I don't fully get it is it just like the white walls in the mirror but like do you guys have mirrors behind your toilet for like when you're so you can watch yourself do it that way because I don't my bathrooms don't look like this my bathrooms have like crappy wallpaper and are not like just white walls but then iuchan also saying i miss the times when oems could configure the vram of their graphics cards you could get 128 256 512 megabytes and even stupid one gigabyte ddr3 versions i mean what was it uh oh man back when i first kind of got into pc building there was the uh, 8800 gts 320 and 640. Uh, i think i think it wasn't just a difference of vram i think that there was a there was a core difference as well, but everybody wanted the 8800 GT anyways with its 512 megabytes of VRAM. And then my best friend in high school uh, spent a lot of his money to get the 8800 GTX Ultra with the 768 megabytes. Good times, old times, we're aging. And then Ray's Tech Tip saying, Brett, all these problems with these companies, there's no winning side, take it easy on Brett. Or don't, you know, we just keep having fun. But at least Olive Cake says, as an AMD fanboy, I don't think you're fanboying AMD. Thank you. I try to have a mindset that is at least as objective as I can make it, recognizing my biases where I have them. And like, I thoroughly enjoy AMD. I like to buy their things. I thoroughly enjoy some things Intel has. I thoroughly enjoy some things Nvidia has, but I also know that the decision that is right for me is not right for everybody. And I don't want to be the person who says that things are objectively true when there are subjective needs and desires of each person interacting with one another in the world. That being said, don't don't buy Linux. It's a bad idea. Linux, boo. Just rile up more comments for tomorrow's episode. Okay, bye.